I, I really don't know. I ain't even thought about it. I'm just messing with stuff to make the internet mad, to make the internet mad. I ain't dreaded up. I, I ain't locked my hair. But this is years of growth, Jimmy. I've been working on this for years. You just come in and get a hairstyle and your, your hair lower than mine. Oh, no, man. What's the word, y'all? NBA Media Day was today, and I cannot be more excited. Friday. We get NBA caliber ball. Now, it is Golden State versus the Washington Wizards, but I don't care. It's preseason, and I'm invested as if it was game seven of the NBA Finals. That's how long it's been since we saw some good old basketball. I went back to watch my video last year about the media day, and it was a lot of drama involved. We had Ben Simmons versus the 76 organization. This year wasn't a lot of that. It was a lot of kumbaya. It was a lot of, oh, we excited. We believe we have a chance to do this. We believe we have a chance to do that, which is a great mindset to have before you picked up a basketball for the season. But it wasn't a lot of drama, man. And, and as much as I love the game of basketball in itself, I do live for some NBA drama, to be honest with you. Actually, there was one team that there was like no kumbaya. There was nothing. It was the Suns, y'all. And here's a tweet. Jay Crowder wants out. Chris Paul says he learned nothing from the Dallas series, which is crazy. Chris, you know you're my boy, but God, nothing? Not one singular thing? I know you're the point guard, but you had to learn something, right? DeAndre Aiden looks like a depressed hostage. Suns vibes are in the toilet. The fellas, as we know them, might be done. And that's coming from one of the more diehard Phoenix Suns fans that I follow. And if you don't know what he's talking about with the DeAndre Aiden stuff, it's kind of eerie, man. Congratulations on obviously getting the getting the deal. Um just maybe your your thoughts that now that 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 you got that. Maybe what was your initial reaction once the Suns matched the Pacers off? I was happy. <laughs> it was all done, I guess. That's it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? I can't even be mad at them for having the Vabs be off. See, y'all got to think about the way their last couple seasons went. They get invited to the bubble. I still remember people are mad that they even got an invite. They go undefeated in the bubble. They're like, you know what? Next year's our year. They trade for Chris Paul and make a complete run to the NBA Finals but lose to Giannis. No big deal. We bring everybody back, and we got more reps. And then they make it to the playoffs again. Not only do they make it to the playoffs, they're the best team in the regular season by far. And they go against the Dallas Mavericks and get laughed off of their own court, losing by 173 points, right? That's a series that they were heavily favored in, and they got laughed off by Luka and Theo Pinson on the sideline with a towel. Like, it was bad. Can you imagine if they came into this presser, this media day, gridding, you know, down to the press box? Absolutely not. It would feel kind of weird. Like, bro, the last game y'all played was embarrassing. But no smile at all after a match is crazy. Obviously, they got a lot of stuff bigger than the on-court stuff they got to deal with with Robert Sarver and Jay Crowder wanting out because Cam Johnson is now the starter. And that's, an, uh, that's a weird scenario in itself. Jay Crowder is a very good NBA player, a, a player that I think a lot of Suns fans would say the idea of Jay Crowd is probably better than the actuality of it, but he's upset because Monty Williams told the team that Cam Johnson is probably going to be starting. Makes sense to me. Cam Johnson is a stud, right? Jay wants out, but I'm looking at the teams that might want Jay and think about his opportunity to start, and the only one that makes sense to, is the Miami Heat, and the way the Miami Heat get him is like a crazy three to four teamer. So, Jay Crowd, I'm hoping that you get straight to some place you want to go, but the likelihood of you starting in any place outside of Miami feels weird. This is not about the Phoenix Suns. This is about Media Day. But they're just the one that had the drama infused or it was just a bit weird. Let's go to some stuff that made me excited. I don't have much to say. The, the Pelicans Media Day in general. If I'm grading Media Days, the ones I thought was the best to the worst, this one was number one. Zion is in the best shape of his life. And remember... Bro averaged 27 on 61% shooting the last time we saw him play, and he wasn't even considering himself in shape. <laughs> he said he's jumping higher. He's running faster. He didn't say he was hitting jump shots. I don't know if that really matters. But he said he's in the best shape of his life, which is insane. You got this picture. Just makes everybody happy. Look, look how excited he is. He just gave CJ another bag. Shout out to CJ for getting another big old contract. Uh, probably the highest paid player in NBA history to not make an all-star game. That's CJ McCollum, and he deserves it at this point. Weird here to see CJ like two inches taller. It's because Zion's a little bit back, but but look at Griff. Griff is like, oh, the, the league is in trouble now. And I think what makes me more excited, and you ain't gotta listen to what he's saying. First of all, that's a big ass hoop in your ear, Zion. I had no idea your hoop, hoop, hoop earring was that large. When you sign the type of money, I guess you could do that. The, the thing that makes me happy is that he's he smiled throughout this entire thing. He was just so excited. Look at that, look at that grin right there. 
Come on, man. You can't tell me he ain't about to average 30 points per game this year. So you got those things with Zion. Shout out to him. Brandon Ingram gets interviewed. Herb inspires me. I forgot he's a second year player. And I'm not going to show you this whole clip, but basically Brandon Ingram is, is saying like, Herb's got some discipline out of this world. Saying that for somebody as young as he is, this man Herb be saying, oh, I got to get some rest because I got practice in the morning or just getting up a, a crazy amount of shots and how disciplined he is with his diet and his workout. And y'all know Herb Jones has been my boy since the first time I saw him lace up his sneakers. So to hear Brandon Ingram say that, Brandon Ingram said, hey, when I was a year two player, I had I didn't know any of this stuff. And Herb is teaching me. Like, that's crazy. I told y'all before that must watch TV Pelicans this season, 1,000%. And they just made me feel more comfortable with saying that after this press. Some things we're going to fly through, but this is one dealing with the Charlotte Hornets. On the center rotation, we need physicality. We struggle with screening and rebounding. I love our preseason schedule to help gauge ourselves with how it's going to play out. I'm assuming that's what that is. Mentions Plumlee will start the season, and then Nick Richards will be the backup. I should probably give you some context, huh? Um, that was Steve Clifford talking about his center rotation. Everybody knows that the Charlotte Hornets have the worst center core in all of basketball, but they did draft the guy Mark Williams. Um, and I have been seeing some Hornets fans kind of upset with the idea of, you know, not having Mark in the rotation at all. I mean, I can't say he's not in rotation at all, but him being the third string center on a team that's not really trying to do nothing this season. Um, so I can I can feel their pain low key. LaMelo Ball also said that he hopes that Miles Bridges is back with the team. I don't know how that's going to play out, but we'll see. We're already, I guess we haven't talked about the Miami Heat, um, but we saw some Miami Heat. Here's a quote that made me excited, but this player I'll always be talking but he don't be doing. Bam Adebayo says his goal is to take 18 shots per game this season. Team has been on him to take a bigger scoring role. Uh, he averaged 13 shots last year, and I think this, this account right here said I read this every year. I mean, me and my boys debate about Bam Adebayo all the time, talking about how he could be the, well, he might be the most versatile defensive big in all of basketball right now, but he has the opportunity to be the most versatile completely if bro would just start to be more aggressive on the offensive side. You see flashes where like it was a game set. Was that game seven versus Boston where he was taking a lot of shots? He's being aggressive. He's getting to the basket. He's doing everything. He just doesn't do a full time. And you have to do a full time to be in the upper, upper echelon amongst centers. Now, everybody knows Bam is great, but like he has to do this. He has to take 18 shots per game. One of them at least being a three. It wasn't like two years ago. Jimmy was like, I'm finding him every game that he don't shoot a three. He didn't even shoot. He hasn't shot a three since. So Bam has the offensive skill set to to take 18 shots and still be efficient with it and get his point per game up. I think this year he has like 19 and something like that. He can easily be a 20 plus point per game scorer. He just got to do it. Sticking him to the Miami Heat. Uh, great transformation from VO. I, wait, what did they call him? B.O. Bam and Victor Lipo because they nasty. Is that what they said? That might be the worst quote of all media day today. They call each. They call their duo Bam and Abayo and Victor Lipo B.O. because they're na that's terrible. He writes lyrics. He's a lyricist. He's a singer, songwriter. They can be better than that. But he looks like he's in top shape, which is something you're gonna see for every media day. Cause I oh I wrote down all the people I saw. Um, said mentioned their weight loss or just getting more in shape. Of course, James Harden is the big one. Said he lost 100 pounds. We already talked about Zion looking like Xanos. Derrick Rose went shirtless in his press game or his uh, interview because he just wanted to let you know, hey, I'm the same weight I was when I was a rookie. I don't know how great that is. I digress. And then um, the one the least amount of people care about, Patrick Williams lost some weight this offseason. So everybody comes into media day saying, hey, I'm in the best shape of my life. We'll see what actually goes down. Kid reiterates he envisioned Dinwiddie and McGee starting and Chris Jewell coming off the bench, although there will be consideration, considerable experimental with lineups and rotations. And I saw a lot of pushback from people like, what is Jason Kidd doing? For me, it kind of makes sense. Not saying that Chris Jewell is not talented enough to be a starter because I would be like just crazy to say that. But for what the Mavericks are trying to do, it kind of makes sense for him to be the sixth man. Listen, being a sixth man should not be a role that's looked at like, oh, he's bad. Being the sixth man don't mean you the sixth best player on the roster. Sometimes the five that is starting just works well together. Especially since recently we've had some super dope ass people to come off the bench and make it cool. You know what I'm saying? Starting off with, of course, Manu Ginobili. I think he's the one that comes to mind to, for everybody. But then, like, Jamal Crawford came into the league. Jordan Clarkson, Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell. These are people that made coming off the bench seem cool for me. Now, I can't say the same thing about somebody like Christian Wood going into a contract year. But I think in his interview, he said, I don't really care. I'm just, I'm motivated either way, which is a great thing 
But he also tweeted, LOL, which made me think that he was laughing at the idea of coming off the bench. But people say he was laughing at the idea that other people thought he was laughing at the idea of coming off the bench. It was confusing, Christian. And for a guy that only tweets once every three months, you got to admit, people are going to dissect the LOL tweet. I was people. Anyway, uh, the Dallas Mavericks last year were a team that held their hat on the defensive side of the ball. Christian Wood not known to be a plus defender i'll say that that's the nicest way i can say that it makes sense to ride out with the people that we do trust on the offense side of the ball to start off and let the rest fall into place but again we're talking about media day and things change from now in game 22 of the season i want to say thank you for being here and i'm excited to to make content for the 2022 2023 nba season hopefully you stick around for the entire time leave a like subscribe and i'll see y'all soon